Mr. President, I hope that you and Mrs. Reagan and your party have enjoyed your visit to Ireland as much as we have enjoyed being your hosts. Your visit to our country has helped to remind us of the eternal values which we share and cherish. The Irish people have been happy to share during the past three days your pride in your Irish ancestry, an ancestry which can claim a proud place in the annals of this island. The people of Ballyporeen were especially glad yesterday to welcome you back as one of their own. Like the people of Ballyporeen, we all take immense pride in the fact that the descendant of an Irish immigrant is the chief executive of the most powerful democracy on earth. That you hold this high office, Mr. President, is a tribute not only to you, to your ability, courage, and dynamism, but also to that freedom, admiration of endeavor, and magnanimity which have made America great. Mr. President, you have enhanced and enriched the quality of the relationship which exists between the United States and Ireland. As you leave our shores, may I, on behalf of the people of Ireland, wish you a safe journey and express the hope that you and Mrs. Reagan will come to Ireland again to renew the personal friendships which you have forged and to strengthen the bonds of cordiality which bind our peoples. May you carry away with you pleasant memories of Ireland and her people. President and Mrs. Hillary, Mr. Prime Minister Fitzgerald, all our new friends, what a wonderful visit this has been for us and what a wonderful homecoming. Your country has given us a whole world of memories and images from the gentle beauty of Galway to the busy hum of Dublin, from the peacefulness of Ballyporeen to the loveliness of Sweet Shannon. You gave us 100,000 welcomes. I won't try to say that in Gaelic, but I've mastered at least a bit of your native tongue. I now call Nancy Mavornin. Very good. Your warmth has touched our hearts. You've made this traveler feel like one of the family. Now it's time to say goodbye. And as I leave, I feel such a tug and I want to stay with you and laugh and talk some more. There's something in your country that makes the American Irish feel like exiles when they leave, as if they're leaving a part of themselves behind. This is my third visit to your country. I remember my first 35 years ago. Oh, I was just a lad at the time. <clears throat> I walked the streets of Dublin and I went with the Abbey Theater and I stayed at the Gresham, strolled down O'Connell Street and saw the bullet marks on the old post office. And that night, I followed the sound of music to the entrance of a ballroom there at the hotel, and I peered in and was told that it was a university dance. And all the young men were dressed in white tie and tails. The young women were all in flowing white gowns, and they were doing a whirling waltz. And it was so graceful and so beautiful, it looked like it should have been a scene in some very expensive musical movie. And I wish the world would just slow down a little and make room, more room, for such graciousness. Well, that's how Nancy and I feel today. We wish the world would just slow down so we could have more time with all of you. When I came back to Ireland, uh, a few years ago, I went out to the west and saw the ruins of the chapel where they say St. Patrick raised the first cross on Irish soil. And nearby, there was a well fed by underground springs from a hill far away. And they told me then, just as we were looking, our guide said, it's a wishing well. 
Well, I should just say that Nancy and I threw in some coins and made a wish. The truth of the matter is we had been in six other countries before we got there. I had a dime and a penny in my pocket. She threw the dime and I threw the penny. And we went home with empty pockets. But we did make a wish. And a few days ago, when we landed in Shannon again, our wish came true. I want you to know that Nancy and I made another wish this morning. We want to come back when my work is done in Washington. In my cal by my calculations, that will be in January of 1989. Though <laughs> uh, 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 uh. oh, I won't make that a promise, because I understand there is some disagreement on whether that should be the date or not. But when I come back, I'll be able to stay longer and, I hope, able to see all of you again. We will never be far apart, Ireland and America. We're tied by ties of blood, ties of history, and by a natural affinity and affection. America loves the Irish, and I hope the Irish will always love America. You're in our hearts forever. And as I leave this place, I think again of the words of a poem. Pearly are the skies in the country of my fathers, purple of the mountains, home of my heart, mother of my yearning, love of all my longings, keep me in remembrance, long leagues apart. We will keep you in our remembrance, long leagues apart, and we'll remember your kindness and your warmth forever. Thank you, and God bless you.